At the Warsaw Summit, allies have reaffirmed a trajectory for the alliance and its capability development that they initiated at the Wales Summit. But Wales focused pretty much on the level of defence spending needed to support adaptation and change to meet the new security environment that has occurred in Europe and the southern perimeter of NATO's area. NATO defence planning is supposed to translate this trajectory in real terms for allies to be able to respond individually in their national defence plans. Of course, the trajectory is towards heavier, more capable forces, able to deal with the issues of deterrence and defence that allies are still considering at NATO headquarters. These heavier capabilities are by their very nature more expensive, and therefore the problem for the Alliance is generating the funds, after a period of global financial turmoil, to actually start on this trajectory individually, to produce the set of forces and capabilities that NATO needs to do what they, the Allies, have said it should be able to do, to meet the level of ambition they have specified and the other objectives agreed in Council by at the moment 28 Allies but soon to be 29. Also at the Warsaw Summit, they have reconfirmed the Alliance's basic core values, the reasons we have an Alliance that NATO, um, the organisation, has to put into effect the wishes of the allies that make up its membership. NATO defence planning itself is a process that for a long time focused on the short term. Now it is making a determined effort to cope with the medium and the long term because it is only in the medium and long term that NATO defence planning can hope to influence allies in their national defence planning efforts. Uh, we've had a system that has been focused largely on the short term, but work at NATO headquarters is taking a longer perspective of NATO defence planning.